Good evening, good evening, good evening. We're so glad to be with you on this evening. We're asking that you would tag and share as we make ready for a study on this evening. Tag and share. We want everybody that can uh, to come in and be a part of this Bible study on this evening. Let's tag and share. Let's tag and share. Let's get everybody involved. Amen. As we make ready to go into the word of God on this evening. Again, it is always a pleasure uh, to come to you and to be able to share with you in the word of God. We never take it for granted because we realize that it is a privilege to be able to teach the word of God. Amen. Amen. On this evening, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. How we thank you, God. For this opportunity to be able to come before you, God, again, to share the word of God with your people. Yes. Open ears, yes. eyes, yes. minds, spirits, oh God, that your people may be able to receive the deposits on this evening. Yes. Father, open me up to your spirit, God, that I may hear you, God, as you speak audibly to me to teach what it is that you have given unto me to your people. We tell you that we love you. We bless you. We thank you for those who are uh, on tonight, God. We pray, God, that there will be impact in their lives tonight, God, like never before. Teach and touch through your servant. In yes, Jesus' Lord. name, amen. 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 We're not going to sing a worship song on this evening. Amen. We're going to go straight into the word of God. I'm going to ask that you will go with me. Uh, to the gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Uh, we were there on last week, and we'll just pick back up there and read verses uh, 19 through 28. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're talking tonight again from the subject, we need more Johns in the earth. <clears throat> we need more Johns in the earth. And this is part two on this evening. Uh, we need more Johns in the earth. We need more people in the earth that will avail themselves uh, to the Lord so that we would be able to experience the kingdom of God on a level like never before. Mm -hmm. Trust the fact that we've experienced some great things as it relates to the kingdom, but there are so many other things or so many other exploits that the Lord want to show and do in the earth through those of us who are willing to avail ourselves to the Lord. It's incredibly important that we understand that none of us are any less than the other. Amen. It doesn't matter what your platform is. It doesn't matter what your title is. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the gospel. It doesn't matter how less you've been in the gospel. Mm -hmm. What counts is that you're in the kingdom of God and you are available to be used by him as a minstrel. That means that your heart is open. Yeah. That means that your spirit is open. That means that your mouth is ready. Uh, the Bible says that our tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. Yeah. That as uh, one begins to write, it literally our tongue, as one begins to speak, our tongue you know, speaks in the pen writes. And that, that's that's what our tongue is, like, like that of a ready writer, ready uh, to speak that which has been written, ready to speak so that something can be written. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so on this evening, I pray that we understand that uh, in every way possible. Again, let's go to John, first chapter, verse 19. Now, this is the testimony of John. Let's start right there real fast. I told you last week, the enemy wants your testimony. If the enemy can take and steal and rob you of your testimony, what do you have left? Come on. What do you have left? Your testimony is everything. Mm -hmm. When you understand your testimony, when you understand that the enemy wants your testimony because he understands that we overcome him mm -hmm. by what? We're about testimony yeah. and by the blood of the Lamb. In other words, there is victory in your testimony. Mm -hmm. There is victory in your testimony. Somebody write that on the screen. There is victory in your testimony. Don't lose your testimony. Amen. 
what will be said about you at the end of your life? What will be written about you at the end of your life? What is being written and said about you now? This is your testimony. And you don't need it marred. You don't need it smeared, all right? Your testimony speaks to your character, speaks to your integrity. It speaks to who you are, not your title, not your positions, mm -hmm. not your finances and your riches, mm -hmm. none of that. Because when it's all said and done, when we stand before God, may the works I've done yeah. speak for me. <clears throat> Paul speaks on this wise as he talks about the fact that we shall all stand before the Lord. And in standing before the Lord, we shall give an account of the good and the bad in which we've done in this body. But remember, he talks to the church at Corinth about building. He says, the foundation has already been laid. There can be no other foundation laid because Christ is the foundation. Mm -hmm. He says, be careful about what kind of works you build on that foundation. Mm -hmm. Wood stubble, hay. You understand what I'm saying? What is he saying? Whatever is tried in the fire that does not stand, it will be burned. Mm -hmm. But Paul says you'll be saved yet as by fire. Mm -hmm. I want my works to last. Yes, yes. I want my works to last. Why? Why do I want my works to last? Because in the book of Revelation, John says that our works do follow oh, us. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, i got to pause, and I want to say this right fast, and i get back into the word. Even though our works follow us, we don't want to be caught up in a works righteousness. In other words, we don't want to be trying to work to be righteous. All right? Jesus has already finished the work of righteousness. We must now enter into that righteousness. Amen? Amen. Uh, 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 who is it? John said, he who practices righteousness mm -hmm. is righteous. Mm -hmm. So we enter into righteousness through and by way of Jesus, who is our righteousness. Mm -hmm. He is our righteousness. So I don't get up and work to be righteous. That was in the old dispensation, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we talk about. Uh, 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 um, sacrificing and, 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 and coming to shallow and, and, and offering up bullocks and ewe lambs and turtle doves and, and, and all of these burnt oxen, all right? They, they were only righteous for the course of a year and then they had to come right back. Uh, every year, pre-adventure, they lived, right? Yeah. And they had to offer that up once again. But, but I thank God because Paul speaks to righteousness in the book of Romans in the first chapter where he says that Christ is the end of the law. Yeah. All right? He says Christ is the end of the law, all right, as unto righteousness, all right? So he became our righteousness. In other words, we don't, watch this, and I want to say this, we are not bound by the law, but we yet must honor it. Yeah. Why? Because Christ didn't destroy it. He didn't do away with it. He fulfilled it. Mm -hmm. You see? And, and, and that's the thing. If, if the word of God says thou shalt not, guess what? Thou shalt not. Thou shall not. Mm -hmm. And we have a whole lot of people rewriting the Bible to fit their customs. We have a lot of people rewriting the Bible to fit their denominations mm -hmm. and to fit their beliefs. But the Bible says, let God be true. And let every man be found, what? A liar. Uh -huh. Amen. So everything that is written, it is written for the sake of us, excuse me, for the sake of us understanding what righteousness is and having a path to follow, right? So watch what he says. Now this is the testimony of John uh, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? This is so important because I'm telling you again, as I stated last week, anytime God begins to do something uncommon, the church frowns on it, mm -hmm. especially leaders in high places. Mm -hmm. You see? See, when people 
see God doing something new through somebody new. They want to know who are you. You see, sent Levites and high priests just to know who John was. Mm -hmm. See, but it wasn't about John. John was only a voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you are speaking the word of God, unapologetically, when you are speaking the word of God and it is profound mm -hmm. and it is bold and you begin to declare it, watch this, people want to know who it is. It's either going to dry or it's going to drop. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. And anytime time you're speaking the word of God and it's for real, it's going to dry. Those who are not ready to change their lives, but it's going to draw everyone who's hungry. Yes. Everyone who's thirsty. You become a whale. You become a whale. And people come because they are thirsty. He who hungers and thirsts after righteousness, what? Shall be filled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says. By the truth. By wisdom. By knowledge. And send it not. Yes. By the truth, by wisdom, by knowledge, and sell it not. Amen. Amen. I put a quote out this week, and it's not contradictory at all, that we're actually living in the era of the era of era, all right? And we're in a place now where we can't even speak the truth because people can't see the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see? And when you understand that, you understand that. Watch this. I'm going to get on this prophecy thing right quick, and I'm going to get right back off. When you understand prophecy, Paul, in the New Testament, said it is for edification and exhortation. Mm -hmm. All right? <clears throat> it is there to build. Now, stop real fast and stay with me. Before you get ahead of me and get out there, and see it as he said it, and not see it as it relates to why he said it. Hmm. You're going to mess yourself up. This goes back to sensationalism, all right? We talked about this. Paul is talking to a church who watched this. It wasn't that they weren't utilizing their gifts. They were abusing their gifts. You see, he's talking to a church who were putting their gifts before their God. He's talking to a church who was so caught up on giftings that they thought that they were more valuable than others who didn't have their gifting. Hmm. But Paul tells us that it is God who set each member in the body as it pleased him by the self-same spirit. Now, why did Paul say that prophecy serves for exhortation and uh, 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 empowerment, edification? Why does he say that? He says this because, watch this, during that time you had people who were so out of order in the church. And if you go back and you study the culture of the church there at Corinth, you'll realize that they had men in the church who were married to women in the church. Thank God that we don't have the custom that the church at Corinth had. During that time, the men were set on one side of the church and the women were set on the other side of the church. And therefore, as a result, when the woman was on the other side of the church opposite from her husband and the preacher was preaching something, she would yell, Hey, Bailey, what in the world is he saying? I don't understand this. This is one of the reasons that Paul says, teach your women to keep silent in the church. Not that they come, thank you. This is why he said, teach your women to keep silent in the church because there was always disruptions in the church, all right? Being that they were trying to understand what was being taught and therefore they were not. You got to understand that they did not have in the Corinthians church. They did not have the customs of the normal, of the typical Jews, all right? They had idle customs, and they were being actually 
uh, 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 renewed in the spirit of the Lord. He was teaching grace on a level to bring them in and to understand that your gift is not greater than anybody else. So when he talks about exhortation and edification, watch this, he's also talking about prophecy. Remember Paul says there in that chapter, he says, listen, he says, I, I would rather speak five words with my natural tongue than to speak 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Mm -hmm. Why does he say this? He says this because if there is no one there to interpret the 10,000 words, there is no edification. Mm -hmm. So what he says then, therefore, that when you have one speaking in tongue and there is one there to interpret the tongue, he says that serves as prophecy. Now, what does that mean? Edification is now involved. Mm -hmm. So he says, watch this, he would rather that we all do what? Prophesy than to what? Speak in tongue. Therefore, as we prophesy, everyone hears prophecy. Therefore, everyone is edified. Everyone receives exhortation. Everyone is built up. Everyone is on the same level, all right? So we understand that. Then he goes on to say that if I'm speaking in an unknown tongue and one comes in who is unlearned, who is unchurched, who is unfamiliar with the Spirit of God, will we not be barbarians one to another? But if he comes in and I speak in an unknown tongue and there is an interpreter there in the church and he begins to interpret, he says, the darkness of his heart, the deeds of his heart are made manifest and he falls on his face before God and he repents. Yeah. Why? Because exhortation has taken place. Edification has taken place. He's built up on the word of God and he understands through the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why did I say all that? I said all that to say this. Many times people will prophesy to you, watch this, what you don't see because of what they do see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can I say it again? Yes. Many times people will prophesy to you what you do not see because of what they do see. Somebody need to write that down on the screen. Many times people will prophesy to you what you do not see because of what they do see. What do you mean, preacher? They will prophesy things to you that you do not see. They see destruction, but they will not prophesy destruction to you. Why? Because it won't add to their bottom line. Hmm. If they really prophesied to you what the Lord, many people show them, you will not finance their ministry. Wow. And to show you and to prove to you how valid this is, this is why you're going through what you're going through. Because it is what they saw, but would not say it to you because they wanted you to have more faith in them and their gift than they did Love. you having faith in the voice of God. This is why God got angry with Moses. Moses, why did you just speak to the rock as I told you? Now they have more faith in the rod than they do in God. Because you took the rod and hit the rock. And I told you to open your mouth and speak to it. Yeah. See, they were following the rod. I'm trying to get you to understand. When you are open to the spirit of God. When you avail yourself to the things of God. Watch this. He will deposit revelation in you. Give you knowledge. Give you understanding. Different nuances of the scripture. Watch this. Not that you become a wonder, but that you become a person of understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get what? Wisdom. But in all you're getting, what do you need? You need an understanding. When we talk about the simplicity of the word, you don't have to be deep. You don't have to go all the way off the edge and try to pull people with you. No. Give people the word of God. Thereby people are free. And that's important in this earth at this time. All right? So watch what he says. Now this is the testimony of John. Uh, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. They knew of, watch this, the Christ to come. Uh, how do I know this? Because uh, in 
I think it is John 16, 16. I'm sorry, Luke 16, 16. Uh, later, baby, you might. What do you have? Uh, NIV? I want you to read that for me real fast. Luke 16 and 16. Luke 16, 16. Luke 16, 16. The law and the prophets were proclaimed unto Jonah. Now, see, you, you, you see that? The law is what I'm trying to tell you. You can't do away with the law. Mm -hmm. All right? It was fulfilled, not done away with. Uh -huh. The law and the prophets was what? Proclaimed until John. Was proclaimed until John. In other words, John was the last prophet to come. Uh -huh. To speak of that which was to come. Uh -huh. When Christ came, all that the prophet spoke about, all that the law spoke about, all that John, who was the boss and the forerunner, spoke about was finally here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is at hand. Is at hand. Yeah. Repent. Mm -hmm. You've been looking for it. No. You've been searching for it. And now it's right here in your face. So he says, all the law, all the prophets, even up until John, John was the last prophet mm -hmm. that prophesied about the kingdom to come, that prophesied about the Messiah to come into the earth. Mm -hmm. All right? But here's the thing you got to understand. If you waste too much time on people rejecting you, in the end, you just might be rejected. Uh -huh. yes, sir. You might want to put that on the, skin, on the screen. If you worry about people rejecting you, wasting too much time on people rejecting you, in the end, you just might be rejected. Mm. People don't reject you. They reject mm -hmm. your Christ. Yes. They don't reject you. They reject the message. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You happen to be carrying the message as the messenger. Therefore, they don't want to have nothing to do with you. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because you won't curb. You won't bend. You won't bow. Yes. And when people are not ready for the truth, watch this. They will denounce and renounce Everything that is connected to it. I'm telling you the gospel is true. And that's why it's important in this time. At this time that you understand that you're not going to be popular when you speak the truth. Yes. Yes. Popular people are people. Now, I'm not saying. I don't, I don't, I don't want you to say, well, I don't believe that. No, no, I'm not saying that everybody that is popular ain't speaking the truth. Right. But what I'm telling you, if many influential people in the earth at this time are not necessarily where they were when they first started off, that's how you know somebody ain't right. Everything that I preach now, I've been preaching since I started. Mm -hmm. It has not changed. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I believe it. If you saw something back then, the way that God gave it to you, and you still with the Lord, but a platform became available to you and caused you to look at it differently because more platforms was connected to that platform, chances are you corrupt and don't even know it. Hmm. Or you may be corrupt and know you corrupt. But you're so caught up in where you are that you can't lose where you are because of who you are. Right, right. You got to be careful, very careful. And Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, and, and, and I think it's there in, in 16 or in Luke 7, where, where he was talking to the Pharisees because the Bible said that the Pharisees loved money. He says, you can't serve two masters. 
You got to make a decision on whom you're going to serve. If God is God, serve God. If mammon is God, serve him. Either you're going to love the one and you're going to hate the other. Luke 16, 13, you see? It, you, you, you can't serve both of them. You see? And that's what I'm telling you. When you start speaking the truth, and I'll go ahead and give you this. When you start speaking the truth, you're going to be rejected. What it was that John the Baptist had to uh, uh, speak boldly to King Herod and tell him, you cannot sleep with your brother's sister, Herodis. He said, that's adultery. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. You know what Herodis did? She got mad. King Herod would not touch John because he thought John was Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, that's why the Levites and the priests were sent out because they thought he was the Christ. Mm -hmm. But John says, I will not deny, I will confess, I am not the Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, when you really avail yourself for God mm -hmm. as leaders in the church and stop waiting on the microphone, My Lord. stop waiting on the platform, as real minstrels in the gospel of Jesus Christ, if you're really for real about it and you are out evangelizing and you out winning souls, people will think you the preacher. Mm -hmm. They will think you the pastor. <coughs> and some of you, you will get so caught up in yourself and think that you've been called to lead and you'll lead. <laughs> God ain't called you to leave. Listen, listen, I don't know why I'm here, but I gotta tell you this. The second man's anointing is just as powerful as the first man's anointing. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. If we could ever get that in our head, the second man's anointing is just as powerful as the first man's anointing. <clears throat> You're looking at all of these preachers and all of these gospel singers and all of these different people who are up there and out there and it's wonderful. All of these billionaires and all of these millionaires, all of these influential people, can I tell you something? They are nothing without the second man. Come on now. That's right. They are nothing without a cabinet of people around them. If today their whole team dispersed and walked away from them, I'm telling you there are things that they could not keep <coughs> They could not keep it going. Why? Because other people are put in place to carry those functions out. Mm -hmm. I just wish you to understand that. The second man's anointed. It's just as powerful as the first man's anointing. He is necessary. Why do you think that you have an executive assistant pastor? Why do you think that you have an assistant pastor? <clears throat> an assistant MD? Why do you think that you have an assistant this or a vice president or a, a vice manager or, or, or an associate this or associate? Why do you think you need it? You have it because you need them. Yeah. When the first man goes down, the second man must stand up. We don't see that. We too busy trying to shine. Joshua would have never been the leader that he was if he would have never served Moses. That's why every time Moses went into the presence of the Lord, guess who was able to go with him? Joshua. He was exposed to the Spirit of God. When it was that Jesus went up to the Mount of Transfiguration, every time God went, Jesus went somewhere, he took Peter, James, and John. Everybody can't go. You need a group of people around you who's ready yeah. to help facilitate and push the ministry. Yeah. 
Some of us are so starstruck that you wait on somebody influential to say something when God got somebody in the wings. I can tell you this. I've been wrestling with it all week. Many of the influential people today in this earth have taken concepts and ideals from people you don't even know. Right. And capitalized on them. And it wasn't even theirs. But because they had a brand, because they had a name, people went for it. If ever you know who you are, ever you can find out who you are. That's why John could speak with boldness when he said to Harold, you can't do that. And Harold is at that moment said, you know what? I want his head on a platter. Harold has found a way to get John the Baptist killed. Uh -huh. She told her daughter, on his birthday, I want you to go and take it all off. Get in his face. Take it off. Entice her. And she took it off. And Herod said to her, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. Oh God. A king. A decree. It spoke it. It can't be taken back. He says, what do you want? She said, I want John the Baptist's head on a platter. The Bible said he shook. Mm -hmm. He did not want to do it. Mm -hmm. But because the decree was made, yeah. he had to go forward. Yeah. Be careful. Be careful. Mm -hmm. When you say yes to God. Be careful. Mm -hmm. Because if you ain't ready for what is to come, what is to come is coming. And it's coming like a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. Stop worrying about people hating you. Mm -hmm. They're going to hate you. They're going to hate on you. They're going to do whatever. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, it's not you and whom they are hating. Mm -hmm. It's the Christ yeah. within you. Yeah. Yeah. You see? To the degree that the Bible says that the disciples were beaten because they were told not to speak in the name of Christ, but they rejoiced because they were beaten for the Lord's sake. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. Let me get back here. I don't know if we'll finish this tonight. He said, I'm not Christ. <clears throat> and they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not Elijah. You remember I told you in Malachi 4 and 5 through 6, it speaks about the fact, uh, again, the law and the prophets it was spoken of and prophesied up until John. He was the last prophet that prophesied about this, all right? So it was spoken of that there would come one, all right? Uh -huh. In the spirit and in the strength of Elijah. John was not Elijah. He came in the spirit and the strength of Elijah, one who would turn the hearts of the fathers back to the sons, the hearts of the mothers back to the daughters. Uh -huh. That's why we need more Johns in the earth. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because we need somebody who can turn the hearts of the fathers back to the sons and the hearts of the mothers back to the daughters. All of the things that we see in families today, it is because the fathers are against one of uh, the children and the mothers are against the children. Children are against the mothers. And, and this says, now, now, now watch this. Jesus even said, don't think that I came to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. Why did he say that? He said, because if you love and honor your mother more than you honor me, you're not worthy of me. Hmm. And that's one of the problems with a lot of people. We honor our parents above God. I remember as a little boy, my mother asked me a question. She said, Gerald, do you love me? I said, yeah, mama, I love you. She said, do you love God? I said, yes, I love God. I said, look, uh, but mama, I love you more than anything and more than anybody in the world. I remember saying it just like this. And my mama said, never love anything or anybody more than you love God. Mm -hmm. 
it blew my mind. Why? Because the first time a child comes to know how to love is through his or her parents. That's why it's important for a man to be in the house mm -hmm. so that children can learn how to love a father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is the first example of knowing what it means to love a man, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a father, a leader, the head, Jesus Christ, God. You need that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, somebody. And so watch this. He says, are you a prophet? And he answered, no. They said to him, who are you that we may do what? Answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I'm just a voice. Mm. I'm just a voice. Mm -hmm. You see, Jesus, the Bible speaks of him, Paul speaks of him in Philippians 2 and 5. We're talking about let this mind be in you who was uh, that was also where in Christ Jesus, watch this, who made himself of no reputation, but took on the form of a what? Servant. You know how powerful that is? That God incarnate came down in Jesus. Jesus came down as God. Emmanuel. God with us. God says, I'm not God. I'm a servant. <laughs> God said, I'm going to serve myself. We too busy looking for reputation. We've heard it. Reputation is who we want people to think we are. But characters who we really are. Mm. Everybody want a reputation. Right. Reputation of this and this and this. But your reputation means nothing to God. Amen, somebody. Amen. So John says, look, don't get caught up on me. All I am is a voice. You wouldn't even know I was out here if I was not shout. Come on, come on. If, if, if what I was speaking did not prick you in your heart, you wouldn't even be out here. Mm. One point, John says, what do you want with me, you generation of Bibles? Yeah. Man, that's bold. Mm -hmm. and, and so today you ask the question, when? When, when is it all right to tell somebody that they're not in the will of God. When is it all right to tell somebody that they're going to die and go to hell if they do not get their life right with God? When is it all right to tell somebody God is not pleased with you? When is it all right to tell somebody that the wages of sin is death but to give to God is eternal life? When is it all right to tell somebody that you are not time? When is it all right to tell somebody the word of God? It ain't even popular no more. Come on, sir. Come on. Why? Because we have to be politically correct. Forget about being theologically correct. We need to be politically correct. Jesus was not politically correct. Mm. Peter and Paul was not politically correct. Jeremiah and Isaiah was not politically correct. Elijah was not politically correct. Nahum was not politically correct. A lot of these folks went to the king and told the king what God said. And that the king do not strip the scepter out and permit you to come into his presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were killed. Mm -hmm. But you got to realize something. When the spirit of God is on your life, mm -hmm. you don't care. That's right. Man, when Paul got to preaching, Paul was a, a bold scoundrel. 
-hmm. And King Festus said uh, 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 to, to Paul, too much learning done made you crazy. <laughs> Paul said something. They smacked him on the mouth and he said, well, I didn't even know that he was who he was. <laughs> didn't look like it, didn't sound like it. King Agrippa looked at his boldness and said, you almost persuaded me to become a Christian. Listen to me. You don't almost want to be persuaded. Right. Paul asked the question, do we persuade men or do we persuade God? You've got to know that one day you're going to stand before God. All right, let's go. I got about more, 15 more minutes if I can make it. Watch what he says. He says, I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Remember I told you during that time when kings traveled, they had to build roads. Why? Because they did not want the chariot's wheels to be caught in mud or to be broken on a rock. That would impede uh, the progression of, of the chariot. And it would cause uh, the, 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 the king to be held up when official business needed to be taken care of. And so that's what he is saying. Look, make straight the way. Official business is about to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Repent. Get yourself together. Why? Because you're about to stand before the Lord. All right? Yes. And so he says, watch this. Make sure it's the way. As the prophet Isaiah said, now those who were sent were from the what? Pharisees. And they asked him saying, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet John? Answered them saying, I baptize with water. And, and oh Lord. I could, I could get into that, and, and I don't really have time to exhaust it. So just in lieu of that, I'll just say this, that, that John baptized unto repentance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? And I can't say that without making my case. Uh, at the day of Pentecost, you have those who, apostles who were there, Peter, and, and, and Peter preached the message, repent every last one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus. Now, uh, you've got denominations who have been built from the apostolic faith even to the Pentecostal faith, people who have built denomination of Acts 2.38. Mm -hmm. I'm just being honest. They have built doctrines off of Acts 2 and 38. Right? They, they've even made jokes. There was a woman who was uh, there walking down the street one day and a man jumped out and robbed her and, and she yelled, Acts 238! And the man ran and she looked around and wondered what happened and, and, and one of the men asked, Why, why'd you run? Man, that woman said she had an axe and two third eggs. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright to laugh. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but we built doctrines and stuff on it. When, when, when the apostle Peter says repent, listen to what I'm about to tell you. I mean, you, you just got to go and study it and understand it. When he says be baptized in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. it means be baptized in the authority mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Why? Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Come on. Come on. Every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Uh -huh. At the name of Jesus, demons tremble. Yes, sir. The Bible says, if we believe, we've done well, but even demons believe and tremble. Yes, uh -huh. You see? So it means to go down in the authority of Jesus. It's not about trumping what Jesus says. In Matthew, the 28th chapter, where he says, baptize him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. How can you miss? Mm -hmm. Whether you go down in Jesus' name, whether you go down in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And, and we have all of these arguments going on about baptisms. You got in Catholicism, they're sprinkling water. And the question Paul asks, 
and Colossians is when will we move on from the elementary principle, the elementary rudiments. He said, why we keep arguing over baptisms and tongues and all this type of stuff? It's time to move on. I can tell you this. Denominations were started because somebody didn't agree with what somebody else was teaching. Point blank bottom line. Somebody didn't agree with what somebody else was teaching. Well, I don't believe that, and I'm going to go here. And so on, so on, and so forth. You talk about Wesleyan, you talk about Calvin, Calvinism. The two different opinions. Listen, when you talk about a nuance, when you talk about the nuance, a different nuance, we can be speaking the same thing. A nuance is just means we say the same thing, it's just shaded differently. Or or, or you put more emphasis on this, and I'm I'm putting less emphasis on that. And 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 and, and we rob ourselves of communion with people because of our doctrinal differences. Paul says to the church at Corinth, he says, I shall be fully known as I know in part now. I prophesy in part. I speak in part. But when I shall be received, I shall be known fully. I shall understand fully as I am known fully. We don't all know everything. But we don't have to fall out mm -hmm. just because we're not of the same Come on. set. Come on. And that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. You look at the Sanhedrin Council. The Pharisees believe one thing, the scribes believe another. The Pharisees believed in a resurrection, the scribes do not. Mm -hmm. You see? And so oftentimes, we want to go with the consensus. But I want to tell you something. Broad is the road Come on. that leads to destruction. Just because everybody believing and everybody Come on. doing it, everybody is accepting it, does not mean it's right. Come on, sir. Say it. You see? Say it. And so when God starts utilizing you, People write you off, yes. especially when you're not preaching what everybody else is preaching. Listen, I don't have time to sit up and preach what everybody else is preaching. I don't have time to talk about what everybody else is talking about. I need to be hearing from God each and every time that I preach and I open my mouth. I need to make sure that God has put me in position to touch somebody's heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you can't come to church or worship on a weekly basis and not experience conviction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you do, you got a heart problem. Yes. And you need to take care of that. Mm -hmm. All right? So watch this. We're about to wrap up. He says, look, I baptize with water. My baptism is unto repentance. In other words, once I repent of my works, I go down. I come back up a new creature. And again, as we're talking about baptism, everybody ain't gonna come up speaking in tongues. I'm just gonna go and let you know. And it doesn't mean anything, say. Okay. Stop trying to drown, folks. You keep pushing somebody right back up under the water. You're going to drown somebody. Talking about they ain't got the Holy Ghost and you ain't either. My God. All right? I'm being honest. Some things are just self-explanatory. Everybody will not come up speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Don't highlight one gift and think that that is the only gift. That is the gift among gifts. Mm -hmm. We need administration. Yes. We need some interpreters in the church. We need faith. 
We need laying on of hands. We need prophecy. Mm -hmm. We need these giftings. That's why we have people in the body of Christ now I say, well, I'm the nose. I ain't, you know, ain't nobody trying to smell nothing. I'm the ear. Ain't nobody trying to hear nothing. Everybody want to be the hands and the tongue. Mm -hmm. The gift of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Man, we need this. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Discernment. Oh, God. <laughs> if more people had discernment, there would be less victims in the church. Yes, Lord. Put that on the screen. If more people had discernment, there would be less victims in the church. Well, you can see through a joker. I was looking uh, at a, uh, I got to get out of here, I'm over my time. I, I was looking at a video and, and, and there was this prophet standing up prophesying to a young man. And as the man was there, he refused to receive the prophecy and he told the prophet, I refuse to believe that. I rebuke that. I do not accept that. That is not from God. And they made a whole scene. I can't believe you didn't receive the prophet of the... Look, if you got discernment and you know that what somebody is speaking to you is not from God, you ain't got to receive that. That's right. That's right. Mm -mm. You don't have to receive this stuff. And a lot of people are receiving things that God have not said. It is God who says to Jeremiah, these folks have prophesied and said the Lord has said, and I have not even spoken. Come on. The word it now. Mm -hmm. Moses tells the people in Deuteronomy, that one says the eighth chapter, he says, the Lord will give you a prophet as like one of your brethren. Mm -hmm. He says that when he prophesied, if the thing in which he prophesied does not follow, he has spoken it presumptuously. That is, he has spoken arrogantly. Do not be afraid of that prophet. Come on. Ooh. All these prophets looming over your head. Got your spirit man in chaos. You keep wondering when this stuff going to come to pass. It ain't. God didn't say it. And you angry with God. Like God did you wrong. God didn't do anything to you. God says the day in which you hear my voice. We got people walking around prophesying to people, watch this, and they are hardening their hearts against God because they do not want to hear the real voice of God because they are so stuck and caught up on what man is saying. There was an awakening. Hear me. There is an awakening. And people who are outside of the will of God, who don't know God, are feeling the nudge of the Holy Spirit. And they come to God. While people who claim and profess to know God are leaving God. There's a great apostasy. People just I look at some people and that, 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 that been in the faith long before me and I'll be like, God, never let me get like that. I pray for them. I don't gloat in. I pray for them. That's right. That's right. Never, ever let me get like that, God. You know why? Because I know I'm destined for hell. Not everybody that leave God come back. And you better be careful. You better be careful about going out trying to enjoy yourself before you fully come to God. Because you may go out and enjoy yourself and lose yourself and never come to God. Yes, sir. 
you have great young people right now wishing they could come back to God. There's a book I have by uh, uh, Smith Wigglesworth and, and an old preacher who had left God, who was there on his death, on his deathbed, trying to uh, 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 wishing God would heal him. And, and Smith Wigglesworth asked him, do he love the Lord? He told him, yes. He said, I, I miss him dearly. Mm -hmm. It's true. You don't know what you have until you let it slip away. Until it's gone. I'm telling you from experience. I know what it means to be outside of the will of God and lose the frequency of God. Yes, oh my God. I know what it feels like to lose the frequency of God. And every day my prayer was, Lord, not like this. Don't let me die like this. Sometimes God will get quiet long enough to break you down. Yes, Lord. Because it's only then that you'll look up mm -hmm. when you die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm telling you, tonight if you totally avail yourself to God, and listen to me, you got to be all right with walking alone. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to tell you that it, it ain't lonely sometimes. I'm not going to tell you that it don't hurt sometimes. But one thing that I rejoice in is when the covers are pulled off, mm -hmm. I can say thank you, Lord. You gave me wisdom. You kept me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you understand that not many who are mighty and anointed and influential, not many walk with a great gathering of people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Many may know them. Or should I say of them. But not many intimately know them. Because when God starts separating you, you see things. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You hear things. Mm -hmm. Read, 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 read uh, Luke 7, 28 real fast. I want you to hear this. Somebody type on the screen, I am not insignificant. Don't matter about your title. You are not insignificant. Amen. Luke 7 and 8. She's going to read this. Listen. 7, <clears throat> 7 and 28. I'm sorry. 7 and 28. <laughs> I tell you. I tell you. Among those born of women. Among those born of women. There is no one greater than John. There is no one greater than John. This is Jesus speaking. Did you hear that? Uh-huh. Read on. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom. Yet the one who is the least in the kingdom. In the kingdom of God is greater than he. Is greater than John. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. Jesus said there is no one born among women who is greater than John, but yet the least in the kingdom is greater than he. You think you're insignificant because you don't have a title. You're insignificant because your name ain't being called. You're insignificant because your name is not in the lights. Are you in the kingdom? Because Jesus said the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Come on. Your name on the road? But Jesus tried to tell the disciples in Luke 10 chapter, I feel the Holy Ghost. I got to get out of here. I'm telling you, 
I feel like standing up. I feel the Holy Ghost. Jesus had to tell the disciples in Luke 10 chapter, he says, look, when they came back to him and says, even the demons are subject to us in your name, Jesus said, you missing it. Come on, sir. You missing it. They're not subject to you in your name. They're subject to you in my name. But that ain't it. I've given you power over these demons and these devils and these serpents. Come on. He said, you're rejoicing in the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. That's your problem. You keep rejoicing in all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Not the stuff giver. You're rejoicing in the gifts, not the gift giver. Jesus said, you're focusing on the wrong thing. He says, I need you to rejoice that your name is written. Come on. In the Lamb's Book of Life, the question is, is your name written? The book of Revelation says, and the books shall be open. Yeah. The books shall be open. You've got the book of life and you've got the Lamb's book of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody is in the book of life. It's just like your social security number. Everyone got one. That's the record that you were born in the earth. That you can't die and lie and say I was never there. <laughs> Come on. The books will be open. Your, 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 your existence is written in the book of life. But your acceptance and works is written in the Lamb's book of life. <clears throat> and the Bible says, and everybody who was not written in the Lamb's book of life uh -huh. will be thrown open to the lake of fire, mm -hmm. which burns and brings up. Don't you tell nobody they're going to hell in this day and time. Come on, sir. Come on. It ain't but two places to go. And if you ain't going to hell, mm -hmm. you're going to hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right it ain't a desired place to be. I recorded, re reposted a quote that I put on Facebook some years ago. The wages of sin is death. Quit before payday. Yeah. <laughs> the wages of sin is death. Quit before payday. Shall we continue in sin that grace abound? God forbid, God certainly forbid. not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All I'm trying to say to you in this hour is that when you avail yourself no matter who you are, we learn that yes, no one born unto women, a woman in the service is greater than John, but if you're in the kingdom, at least in the kingdom, you're greater than he is. Mm -hmm. Give yourself to God. If you're watching this tonight and you're in the kingdom of God, especially if you are a leader, you have no business leaving your children at home when you come through the doors of God. Tell your wife to get up. We're going to the Lord's house. Tell your husband to get up. Yeah. We're going to the Lord's house. Tell your children, get up. We're going to the Lord's house. Every one of my children can tell you right now. If I get up on a Sunday morning and I go to the Lord's house, I'll be doggone if you're going to lay up in mine. If his house open, my house closed. <laughs> Many times, my son used to try to sit up and lay up in the house. I tell him, look, uh, you ain't got to go to the Lord's house if you don't want to, but you got to get up out of here. Children, play sick. We didn't have but one shoe. That's all right. Put another shoe on. Go to church on ash your ankles. Because you can't find your other black church song. Why them parents say it? Right. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we're going to serve when we're glad. Uh -huh. I'm glad I'm saved. God being here right now. 
I hear the old deacons praying. Lord, thank you for allowing my golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. I'm not supposed to be alive, but thank God by his grace, I'm still here. We need more Johns and Earth. Sorry, God took me in a whole different direction of life. But I thank God that I'm open enough to hear from him. Yeah. Tell people the truth. Yeah. Don't die with that blood on your hand. Don't do it. We need more people in the earth that will be uh, open enough, bold enough to speak the word of God and to do it unapologetically. But more than anything, to live a life of denial. You got to deny yourself. Oh, yeah. You have to be able to do that. John says, I decrease that he may increase. Yeah. I, it's time for me to pull back. It's time for him to come forward. See, when you really start living your life for God, that's how it is. He comes forward, you pull back. He increase, you decrease. Your light goes out, his light comes on. Yeah. If I be lifted up. Mm -hmm. See? So I'll just say today, lift him up. Yeah. Lift him up. Because he says, if I be lifted up, I'll do the drawing. I don't need you to be a woman. I just need you to be a voice. Come on. Come on. I'm the word. You the voice. Preach me. Preach me. That's it. Preach the word. Preach me. Yeah. And I'll do the drawing. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Powerful sermon tonight. Thank you, God. Yeah. Thank Powerful you, God. worship hour. Thank you, God. Thank you for your hand. Thank you. Thank you for your spirit. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you for revelation knowledge. Thank you for your presence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for conviction. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for conversion. Thank you. I pray somebody was touched tonight, God, that their yes, lives was enhanced the more. Yes, Lord. We love you. We bless you. We thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you. God, touch us. Touch us. In an uncommon way. Touch us, Lord. That touch we may us. be the Johns in this hour. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank you. We love you. We're giving you a virtual hug as always. And we tell you we love you. There ain't a thing you can do about it. Let's remember that um, you can give via GiveLify. You can give via GiveLify. All right? Restoration Outreach Church, you can give. We thank God for those of you who have been given. If this message touched you in any kind of shape, form, or fashion tonight. I just want to ask you about faith so. Mm -hmm. So tonight. You know, and uh, we still got work to do every week. We're doing what God has called us to do and we will do so until he calls us home. Not until he tells us to stop because he will never tell us to stop. But until he calls us home to be with him. Amen. Amen. We love you. Until next time. Bye-bye.